Hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here from The Curious Piano Teachers and welcome back to another Tuesday Teaching Tips. And today we're, I'm going to sort of spend a moment or two um, considering how to avoid show and tell lessons. I was uh, having a chat this morning with one of our diploma students um, and she'd been watching a video of herself teaching and she coined this word show and tell which of course is what all primary schools are very used to so you take an object with you don't you and you present it to the rest of your class and you tell you you tell them where you got it from and why you wanted to bring it with you and I think quite a lot of us actually in our lessons we do this we show and tell we say okay this is a root position chord and it's got C, E and G and it's one, three and five. OK. And then the pupil goes, yes. And then this is the first inversion chord. So these are the same notes, but now it's E, G and C. So it's first inversion and the fingers are one, two and five. OK. Yes. And then we say, and this is second inversion. This is G, C and E and this is one, three and five. You got those. Yes, we'll say the pupil. But actually, you have to always ask, do they really get that? Have they really understood any of that concept at all? And this is what I mean by show and tell. It's where we just get so enthusiastic about our own teaching and about sharing this concept with our pupils that actually we end up being the hero of the lesson instead of our, our student actually taking that central role. They are the hero. We are merely there to guide them and to lead them along the way. So three ideas for how you can avoid show and tell all the time in your lessons. I think the first thing that I would suggest is that you always start with the musical sound. You always lead from the sound of the piano <clears throat> and making music with the particular concept that you want to uh, introduce your student to. So let's say it is one and four and one and five seven which is the same as the triads we've just been looking at, but of course it's in this easy to play version. And maybe you get the student to play them in this Alberti bass, maybe. Yeah. And then maybe once they've got that established, and you can do that through modeling. Modeling is really important here. You don't need to explain what's going on. A, C, E, why say the letter names? Why not sing them? A, C, E, five, three, one, then the student copies you. A, D, F, five, two, one, then the student copies you. A, G, E, five, two, one, get the student to copy etc etc et so it's about you modeling in a really positive and musical way at all times and then you set up and show them how to do the Alberti bass of course that might not happen in the very first lesson this might not happen over a series of lessons but don't get into the theory too much until they understand the practical sound of course they can do this and i was doing this with a student yesterday and why not do an improvisation? Because it doesn't have to be right even and then you can kind of go mm, didn't quite work did it i wonder why and that leads to another one a uh, whole area of discussion so start with music making start with the music making start with the sound rather than with words okay another thing a second point is to get the um get the student involved in helping you to talk less okay and over in the uh, community of the Curious Piano Teachers, we have this thing called the Advice Monster, which we have borrowed from a chap called Michael Bungay Stanya. And he's written a book called The Coaching Habit. And he talks about having the Advice Monster on your shoulder. 
And when a student plays something, of course, what do we do? We always know how to improve it, don't we? And we always know how it could be played better. And we go in with advice. Well, if you did this, if you did that. And, and that's how we tend to work. Well, that tends to make us talk lots. And you can play little, little games with the students. We have a sheet um, and you have the advice monster on the other side. You have feedback on, the, on, on one side. Sorry, two sides, advice monster, feedback. And when, as soon as you <clears throat> give advice, the student kind of goes, ha ha, got you. And they give themselves a tick And um, on, the, on the feedback side. And on the other hand, if you give feedback, then whoa, they get a tick as well. Actually, it's a win-win situation for the student. But it's a lot of fun. And it means that it heightens your awareness of how much you talk. I'm going to have to hurry up because I need to be somewhere else in a moment. So the third thing is instead of telling them their mistakes, instead of going straight in and saying, well, that didn't quite go right, did it? Or that didn't quite go right. Tell them actually what they did do right. So tell them, oh, well, <clears throat> you know, that had a lovely fluid sense of the rhythm and the tempo was very steady all the way through that. Because don't you find your students always know what the problem is? Nearly always, they know where they went wrong. They don't need you to tell them again where they went wrong. What they do need to be told and reinforced to them is where they went right and what they did well. So this is how to avoid show and tell in your lessons for you, the teacher. And the first thing was to let music be the main language, make music at all times, model music, sing musically, demonstrate musically at all times. Do that rather than talk about it. That's the first thing and probably the most important of the ones. Second thing is to get the students involved in helping you to tame your own advice monster. So they are kind of in charge of you, if you like, and telling you when you've used your, the advice monster. And the third thing is tell them what they do well sometimes more than what they do wrong. And I hope that's been really helpful. I'm going to have to dash off now because we've got a membership clinic over in the Curious Piano Teachers membership group. So we love to have you watching us and thank you so much and see you all next Tuesday. Bye for now.